Motorsport. Full throttle from the first second, car and driver always at the limits. Dogged battles for position and extreme cornering speeds. In all the excitement, one modest star often gets overlooked, the tyre. It turns in an incredible unseen performance lap after lap and never gives up until it really can do no more. The most crucial point on the car is the tyre. It's the last thing that sticks you to the circuit. You need to get the car and the tyre working at the same frequency to get the best out of it. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a science in itself. Right from the design stage on the computer, the moulding and heating get calculated so that an optimum working temperature of 100 degrees is achieved. A race tyre works within a very specific temperature range. There are therefore many possible ways in which I can and should treat such a tyre, always depending on the outside temperature, the track conditions and so on. And at times it's certainly a really difficult challenge to get that 100% right. Key to the driver's success in this challenge is the tyre structure. Tread, tyre wall and bead must be designed so that the tyre works on building up heat within a prescribed range and generates grip, with tyre pressure playing a role here as well. So most of the time we are reducing the inflation pressure on track in order to get a wider or bigger contact patch area. This is improving the grip. But in the meantime, by doing, uh, doing this, you, 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 you reduce the, the lateral stiffness of your tyre and then you're struggling to manage uh, handling stability. Temperature problems. The tyre gets too hot and grip is lost. Modern tyre compounds and designs conduct away heat extremely well and permit lower levels of air pressure. Thermal efficiency, grip and handling call for firm tyre walls as a further solution. So we need to, to make sure that uh, we get the, the, the stiffness we need from tyre standpoint, but also the grip from the compound standpoint. But for the perfect race tyre, that's still not enough. After all, it has to survive qualifying sessions and the race. The drivers make further demands of the tyres. In qualifying, of course, you rely on having the right tyre pressure and temperature on the precise lap where it all counts. And then you've got to drive a faultless lap and take advantage of the tyres being at their peak. And then when you get into the race, the tyres should ideally remain constant. If they do, then it's also easy to drive well and to drive fast. As if that was all. In tough racing use, the tyres have to put up with constant mistreatment by curves, skidding and sliding. And yet their task is to convey a reliable feel to the driver and to survive the race distance performing at a consistent level. Our race tyre must therefore also be extremely robust and hard wearing. To be able to hit bumps at high speed, protect the wheels and act itself as if nothing had happened. As always, nothing is left to chance here either, with the tyre taken to the limit even in the lab. And bumps are on the agenda here too. Going over them a couple of hundred times, and at high speed, the tyre's got to hold out. For probably two miles, we just vary the throttle. So we don't brake, you just turn the car in and just vary on the throttle like a tap. That means these little babies get absolutely just driven into the ground. Flaking out or giving up is nevertheless not an option. Be it short or long distance race, no strategy can work if the tyres don't last. So next time you see a tyre change, don't for once just look at the clock. Also have some regard for the tyres. They've earned it.